please help me give a warm welcome to the 18th president of the, Uni of the University of Idaho, Chuck Staben. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks to the board and, uh, and to the search committee and to all of you, all of you for being here and sharing this day. It's, it's really, uh, for me personally, a, a real dream come true. Uh, I, I have stayed in school probably about 49 years so far. It looks like I'll, I'll, I'll push that a little farther forward. Um, the University of Idaho is an extraordinary place. The state's beautiful. We, we, we love it here. We're really looking forward to moving here in, in March. And, and uh, to serving as president. Um, higher education is something I'm deeply passionate about. Our universities have, have played a role in our society um, over time that's really evolved. If you think about universities in the Middle Ages, they were places for the elite only. And now uh, in the United States, we, we learned that universities played a critical role in our participatory democracy. In 1862, the Land Grant Act actually changed things and said, not only will we educate people, but we'll reach out and actually heal the nation's economic and social woes. Today, we're relying on universities to, be, to, remain, uh, to help us remain global leaders, globally competitive. And it's that sort of mission that I hope to bring here to the University of Idaho to help the University of Idaho prepare students to, uh, for their lives after the University of Idaho to be educated citizens, productive citizens for the state and the region. And for faculty to conduct research, provide research that has an impact here in the state and beyond, and to reach out to all the citizens of Idaho. And the University of Idaho is perfectly positioned to do this. It's an incredible opportunity. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be an incredible challenge. I look forward to working with the great faculty, staff, and students of the university, and supporters, many of whom I was able to meet during, during my visit here. And uh, I know this is going to be great fun and, and, an, and an interesting time. And thanks so much for the opportunity. At this time, we would be happy to take questions. I would ask that uh, you please come up to the microphone or at the head of the aisles uh, so those joining from remote locations can hear these questions. Also, we'll take the questions here locally first, and then if there are media questions uh, from uh, remote areas, then we'll uh, follow up with those. And it looks like we may go to the, oh, here comes a question. Can't let him off that easy on his first day. If you would, introduce yourself, please. I'm Glenn Mosley with Public Radio here in Moscow, and I wonder what is on the agenda as of March 1st. Well, the first thing to do, and I'll start that even before March 1st, is to really uh, listen to the people who are here and really know the university best, the staff and faculty of the university. So I think the first order of business is to listen and, and learn from the experts. Um, there are some things that I talked about in my interview that I think we will need to do. I'm not exactly sure how we'll do all of them, but I know, for example, that the university is capable of enrolling more students and graduating more students, and that's something that would be very high on my list of priorities. I think the university can also make investments that will help it uh, succeed in uh, certain areas of research of considerable interest to the nation and to the region. And so identifying those areas and making those investments will also be very high on my list of priorities. Um, there are a couple of processes that I know that we're engaged in that will be important in shaping the future of the university, so seeing those through to their conclusion is very also very, very important. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Dr. Staben. My name is Nancy Cheney. I'm mayor for the city of Moscow, and I'd like to extend a welcome to you and your wife, uh, a warm welcome to our community. We're looking forward to the town gown interaction to come, and I wonder if you could speak about your 
uh, collaborative uh, objectives as might relate to the relationship between the larger community embracing the University of Idaho, my alma mater. Sure, well, thanks so much for, for your welcome. We have felt very warmly welcomed during our visits here and, and also certainly today. Um, the town-gown relationship is a very important one. Um, I think that the, you know, the, the university doesn't exist in a vacuum and, and there, are, there are great interactions between, uh, especially a rather small town and a rather large university in that town. So, um, so I do look forward to a collaborative relationship and I think that's probably the key. And I think the key to most collaborative relationships is listening on both sides and trying to develop some, some common vision of which, which way we're going. I'm not sure that I know quite enough to know exactly what to say about that relationship today, but I certainly look forward to working with you on that relationship. Um, university towns, college towns can be really fun places to live, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be a really fun place to live for everyone. I'm Caitlin uh, Crosselt. I'm from the Argonauts, the student newspaper here at the University of Idaho. Uh -huh. And I just am wondering, um, what appealed to you about the university? Well, what appealed to me is, is a number of things, but certainly high on that list would be that academically it's a superb university. It's in a beautiful place. I happen to really love the West. Um, and uh, I met my wife in California, uh, so I have kind of fond memories of the West. Uh, so, uh, so those those are probably two of the, the key things, that academic quality and really the, the opportunity to advance the university and the interest that I sense in the people at the university and the people on the board, et cetera, in, in actually moving the university forward. So okay. it's, it's opportunities and challenges as I kind of titled my talk when I came here. Uh, and what will you do between now and March 1st to prepare for the new job? Work very hard. <laughs> um, <coughs> To some extent, I know that I actually have two jobs. The day job is to continue to be provost at the University of South Dakota. But I'll be working with people here on, an, on a number of things to, again, prepare myself to get a running start when I come here on March 1st. So I'll undoubtedly be asking lots of questions. I've prepared some of the folks around here that I will be asking those questions. Um, questions to learn what our opportunities are, what our strengths are, what weaknesses we need to address. And, and that sort of thing. So that I'll be doing that and, and moving out of two houses and figuring out life as well. So it should be fun. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Aletha with the Daily News. Um, I was just wondering, you've done, you've had a history of a lot of research. Is there any research on the back burner that you're thinking about for the university? F for the university or me personally, do you? Both. Well, uh, you know, I found being provost pretty much a full-time job, and I'm guessing the president is probably a little more than a full-time job, so <laughs> I'm guessing that research will definitely be on the absolute back burner of my agenda, uh, personally, uh, but not on my back burner as far as facilitating the research of the faculty and students and, and really staff at the university. Um, you know, there are some areas uh, of excellence and, and opportunity here. We've had a really good bioinformatics program through the IBEST program. I think probably some things can be done there to, to, to continue that excellence. And I know there are other areas of, of excellence. The fire science is an area of excellence, I know. There, there, are, there are others. Uh, as I said, I think I'll be looking, working very closely with, for example, uh, Vice President McIver on that and, and, and others, the provost, et cetera, to identify um, how best to move those areas forward. But that is uh, something I look forward to. Research development is something that I, I really like uh, to do. It's very important for a university, very important for the United States. Dr. Sabin, Bill Spence with the Lewiston Tribune. Uh, March 1st is going to be right about the time that the Idaho legislature is approving the budget for uh, higher education next year. Can you talk a little bit about your experience with the uh, state support of higher education in South Dakota and what you're hoping for here? Sure. So. Um, so there's, in South Dakota actually has um, uh, sort of an average level of state support uh, for higher education. It's not a particularly high level of state support, but it's, but it's been adequate to, to grow a couple of very good universities or several very good universities. Um, we had some of the same experiences that you had when the uh, recession hit us in 2008. 
uh, universities were one of the places that state legislators, legislatures could look for cuts. Partly that's because they know that there are some alternative funding sources like tuition for state universities. Um, however, you can't continue to raise tuition uh, you know, forever and, uh, and so there, there are some real limits to what one can do in, in that respect. Um, so uh, I've had experience advocating for funding at the state legislature level, le level. We have a very similar process in South Dakota, the one that I think you use here, where uh, one makes presentations to the Appropriations Committee and it goes forth from there, et cetera. So uh, I'm, I'm comfortable with that process. Uh, Don will have to be the person, I think, taking the lead on that process as it begins. As I understand it, really kind of starts to heat up in January. And uh, presumably, I'll be here for the conclusion of the process. I hope that addressed your question. Are, are there any questions from uh, folks on the phone from our remote listeners? Yes. Uh, could you identify yourself and then go ahead and ask your question, please? This is Betsy Russell with the Spokesman Review. Doc, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Dr. Stanton, your appointment is for three years. The University of Idaho has had several presidents in recent years. How long do you anticipate staying? Longer than three years. Um, <laughs> so. There are many factors in that in, in a decision. I, I, what I was really looking for as I looked at this opportunity was the opportunity to have what I call one last good job for me. I'm 55. I can work 10 or 15 more years, I anticipate. And that, at this point, is really the horizon for me. My wife hates to move. And, uh, and it turns out uh, she's enthusiastic about this move, but she may not have any more in her, and that's OK. Thank you. Other questions from our remote listeners? Jonathan, thank you. I think he handled that like a pro. So. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. There will be a reception this afternoon at uh, 3 o'clock at the Kibbe Dome. For those in the area, please uh, help us. Please come and help us uh, to welcome Dr. Sabin and Mary Beth to the U of I family. Thank you all for being here this morning. We appreciate it.